The Mara is a stupendous wildlife area. It's almost impossible to describe how wonderful it is unless you go there. And it's a very important and interesting place for elephants. One of the world's great wildlife reserves, the Masai Mara region of southwest Kenya, is a landscape that is home to hundreds of animal species. The diverse and lush ecosystem makes the land a perfect environment for the African elephant. But elephants in Kenya and around the world suffer great threats. All across Africa, poaching for elephants' highly valuable ivory caused their populations to dwindle. An estimated population of 1.3 million elephants in 1979 fell to half that number in the mid-1980s. After a ban on the international trade of ivory in 1989, elephant populations rebounded through the early 2000s. But by 2007, a continental estimate showed the numbers of elephants remaining in the wild to be at an all-time low, as resurgence in the demand for ivory brought new and intense waves of poaching. By 2011, some areas of Africa reported the highest level of poaching rates ever recorded. About three and a half years ago, I started noticing that we're getting a lot of calls about dead elephants, an alarming number of calls of elephants dying. And we believe it's linked very strongly to the rise in ivory prices, but we know it's extremely high, almost $1,000 a kilogram. Um, and we, we think this is the drive for poaching in Kenya. People think, you know, that this pretty bit of ivory fell off an elephant and they picked it up. But the reality is that these elephants are being killed and their faces are being hacked off for the ivory. People often assume that when they are able to enjoy beautiful jewelry, that they just go to a shop and buy it. They don't know that there's actually death that was involved in order to create that, and not a natural death either. If the consumer was aware, I honestly believe they would stop. You do a tremendous amount of collateral damage when you take out several um, of the older animals. So it's not just a matter of, of killing a few animals, it's, it's a tremendous effect on elephant society. It's been devastating to see families where the matriarch's been killed and now they're just orphans. Another factor contributing to elephant death is conflict with local farmers and developers who share the land. This problem accounts for far more elephant deaths than natural deaths annually. We have a lot of land that was elephant habitat now being farmed, and so elephants on their traditional sort of ranges move in there, find a nice big crop of corn, and, and go and, and, and smash their way in and sort of finish off five acres in the night. Their reaction has been to spear these elephants. No, no. This is definitely a crop-breeding female. She's got about four or five wounds on her. Uh, there's two at least with the metal inside her uh, body. There's one here, possibly a bullet that's just healed over. There's something in there. Yeah. Don't the elephants are disappearing if we don't do something about it now. Established in 2011 through the generosity of the US-based Escape Foundation, the Mara Elephant Project employs a mix of world-class scientific talent and local on-the-ground expertise in an effort to provide real solutions to the threats facing elephants in the Masai Mara. And you guys then make a semicircle around us on the side of the Kijakada. Operated by conservationists Richard Roberts and Mark Goss, the Mara Elephant Project employs the use of satellite collars, which accurately track and monitor elephant movements. Dr. Ian Douglas Hamilton helped develop the methods for collaring elephants in the 1960s. His team at Save the Elephants, which tracks elephants across the continent, is partnering with the Mara Elephant Project to bring this tracking technology to the Mara for the very first time. There's a very interesting application of this tracking technology. We can send a very small file that people without any training can put on Google Earth and they can see the movement of the elephant live and whether they're in a dangerous area or not and then organize the patrolling accordingly. Oh. 
It's an amazing thing to follow these elephants. It's a big logistical thing. We pick elephants from different parts of the Amara, elephants that are known to travel through different areas, elephants that are known to sort of disappear. We don't know where they go for, for long periods of time. Elephants are going down all over the country everywhere. You definitely have to put in a monitoring system and the collaring project is really important and there's no other way really of taking care of them. You want this one? It's not as easy as people think. It's a very hectic thing, but once you know the elephant is down, you as quickly as possible put the collar, and the scientist takes um, you know whatever they want to take, like tail hair, uh, a DNA, you know, piece of skin. Coloring elephants tells us so much information. We learn about where the elephants are moving, where they're resting, um, which areas they're nervous in. When there's particular conflicts in the community, we can see their movements changing. We're also looking at movements across the international boundary between Mara and the Serengeti, which is exciting because two countries need to join together using good scientific data to plan the future of the elephants. The Mara Elephant Project is so good. I've never seen any like this before. So us as KWS, we really appreciate. We have given out all our support. And uh, they are also helping us in conservation, which is very good. Coloring information also benefits the Mara Elephant Project's Rapid Response Unit, a group of highly trained conservation rangers who work to prevent both human-elephant conflict and poaching in the region. We identify the areas which are being hit the hardest. We train them up to make sure they're effective in difficult and stressful situations in the field. If they find information that there's been, you know, some poaching, that they can follow it up, make sure that they're setting up ambushes properly, and really get these guys. Through outreach programs, the Mara Elephant Project, part of the Escape Foundation's larger conservation initiative, is committed to educating countries where the demand for ivory is at its highest. With the help of the Kenya Wildlife Service, delegations from around the world have come to Kenya to experience elephants in the wild and learn about what threatens them. It's incredible that we can uh, assemble a group together. The group represents uh, the herdier group represents the CWCA, uh, China Wildlife Conservation. We hope to uh, work with the Chinese government, work with the Chinese uh, organizations. We believe that we can make a difference. This bridge will link the people from both countries and the continents to work together to solve those uh, issues. But you know, if we all work together, yeah. we can stop this thing. So the Chinese is pretty confident we can we can do something together. Let's do it together. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> Kenya can't solve this problem alone. It needs the participation of the rest of the world, particularly those countries where they would like to have ivory or other parts of the elephant for whatever purposes. We need really to create that awareness out there. I see this meeting to be a beginning for uh, many good things. Zoos and aquariums are no longer places where you collect animals and just show them. We're active global conservation organizations whose missions are to ensure that we have a sustainable future for wild things and wild places. If we don't help those who are supporting elephant conservation on the ground, we are not doing our jobs as zoos of the 21st century. The African elephant is in crisis. With the demand for ivory surging, the illegal killing of elephants is at its highest level since the ivory trade ban was created in 1989. Since the last population estimates in 2007, the number of elephants living in the wild is thought to be decreasing rapidly. It is estimated that if poaching and conflict deaths continue at the current pace, the elephant could face extinction.
the Mara Elephant Project is working around the clock to ensure that never happens. So tomorrow the airplane goes very early. You'll be in the air as it's getting light. Fine. Put a one collar there because they're probably going up into the Well, the Mara is a special place. We have to learn from our experiences here to make better informed conservation decisions in the future. I spent my whole life here. And now I have my own son and he's growing up here too. With all the pressures of sort of humanity encroaching on, on these very special areas, we have to work harder and harder now to preserve them, protect them, keep them the way they are. Elephants are incredible things. They have to be protected. That's all there is to it. Science and persuasion are the weapons we have. And it's a matter of reaching into people's intellects and into their hearts with sound argument and an aesthetic appreciation of what's at stake.